Front-wheel drive forward is a form of engine and transmission layout used in motor vehicles, where the engine drives the front wheels only. Most modern front-wheel drive vehicles feature a transverse engine, rather than the conventional longitudinal engine arrangement generally found in rear-wheel drive and four-wheel drive vehicles. Topic. Location of engine and transmission By far the most common layout for a front-wheel drive car is a with the engine and transmission at the front of the car, mounted transversely. Other layouts of front-wheel drive that have been occasionally produced are a front engine mounted longitudinally, a mid-engine layout and a rear-engine layout. History Topic Prior to 1900 experiments with front-wheel drive cars date to the early days of the automobile. According to various sources, sometime between 1895 and 1898 Graf and Stift built a Voiturette with a one-cylinder de Dion Bouton engine fitted in the front of the vehicle, powering the front axle. It was thus arguably the world's first front-wheel drive automobile, but it never saw mass production, with only one copy ever made. In 1898, Lattel, in France, devised a front-wheel drive system for motorizing horse-drawn carts. <laughs> Society Parisienne, Victoria Combination In 1898 ninths the French manufacturer Society Parisienne patented their front-wheel drive articulated vehicle concept which they manufactured as a Victoria combination. It was variously powered by 1.75 or 2.5 horsepower, 1.30 or 1.86 kilowatts, de Dion Bouton engine or a water-cooled 3.5 horsepower, 2.6 kilowatts, Asta engine. The engine was mounted on the front axle and so was rotated by the tiller steering. The name Victoria Combination described the lightweight, two-seater trailer commonly known as a Victoria, combined with the rear axle and drive mechanism from a motor tricycle that was placed in front to achieve front-wheel drive. It also known as the Eureka. By 1899 Victoria combinations were participating in motoring events such as the 371 km Paris St. Malo race, finishing 23rd overall and second last in the class. In October a Victoria combination won its class in the paris rambouillet paris event, covering the 100 km course at 26 km per hour, 16 miles per hour. In 1900 it completed 240 kilometers 150 miles non-stop at 29 kilometers per hour 18 miles per hour when production ceased in mid 1901 over 400 copies had been sold for 3000 francs circa $600 each Topic Car J. Walter Christie of the United States patented a design for a front-wheel drive car, the first prototype of which he built in 1904. He promoted and demonstrated the vehicle by racing at various speedways in the United States, and even competed in the 1906 Vanderbilt Cup and the French Grand Prix. In 1912 he began manufacturing a line of wheeled fire engine tractors which used his front-wheel drive system, but due to lack of sales this venture failed. Topic 1920 to 1930 The next application of front-wheel drive was the supercharged Alvis 1250s racing car designed by George Thomas Smith Clark and William M. Dunn of Alvis Cars of the United Kingdom. This vehicle was entered in the 1925 Cop Hill climb in Prince's Risborough in Buckinghamshire on March 28, 1925. 
Harry Arminius Miller of Menominee, Wisconsin designed the Miller 122 front-wheel drive race car that was entered in the 1925 Indianapolis 500, which was held at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on Saturday, May 30, 1925. However, the idea of front-wheel drive languished outside the motor racing arena as no major auto manufacturer attempted the same for production automobiles. Market experiments in the United States were left to small endeavors such as the Ruxton 200 cars in 1929, and the Cordell 29 of 1929. Neither automobile maker was particularly successful on the open market. Alvis Cars introduced a front-wheel drive commercial model of the Alvis 1250s in 1928, but it was not a success either. Topic: 1930 to 1945. The first successful consumer application came in 1929. The BSA Birmingham Small Arms Company produced the unique front-wheel drive BSA three-wheeler. Production continued until 1936, during which time sports and touring models were available. In 1931 the DKWF-1 from Germany made its debut. Buckminster Fuller adopted re-engine, front-wheel drive for his three Dymaxion car prototypes. Other German car producers followed, Stoyuer offered a car with front-wheel drive in 1931, Adler in 1932 and Audi in 1933. In 1934, the very successful traction Avant cars were introduced by Citroën of France. The Cord 810 of the United States managed a bit better in the late 1930s than its predecessor one decade earlier. These vehicles featured a layout that places the engine behind the transmission, running backwards, save for the Cord, which drove the transmission from the front of the engine. The basic front-wheel drive layout provides sharp turning, and better weight distribution creates positive handling characteristics due to its low polar inertia and relatively favorable weight distribution. The heaviest component is near the center of the car, making the main component of its moment of inertia relatively low. Another result of this design is a lengthened chassis. After the 1930s, front-wheel drive would largely become abandoned for the following 20 years. Topic: 1945 to 1960. Front-wheel drive continued with the 1948 Citroen 2CV, where the air-cooled lightweight aluminium flat twin engine was mounted ahead of the front wheels, but used hook-type universal joint driveshaft joints, and 1955 Citroen DS, featuring the mid-engine layout. Panhard of France, DKW of Germany and Saab of Sweden offered exclusively front-wheel drive cars, starting with the 1948 Saab 92. In 1946, Lloyd Cars, the English car company, had produced the front-wheel drive roadster, Lloyd 650. The two-stroke, two-cylinder motor was mounted transversely in the front and connected to the front wheels through four-speed synchronized gearbox. The high price and lackluster performance had doomed its production. Only 600 units were produced from 1946 to 1950. In 1954, Alfa Romeo had experimented with its first front-wheel drive compact car named 33, not related or referred to sports car similarly named 33. It had the same transverse mounted, forward motor layout as the modern front-wheel drive automobiles. It even resembled the smaller version of its popular Alfa Romeo Giulia. However, due to the financial difficulties in post-war Italy, the 33 never saw the production. Had Alfa Romeo succeed in producing 33, it would precede the Mini as the first modern European front-wheel drive compact car. 
In 1955, one of the first Japanese manufacturers to utilize front-wheel drive with a transversely installed engine was the Suzuki Suzulite, which was a small, city, car, called a KEI car in Japanese. In 1959 Austin Mini was launched by the British Motor Corporation, designed by Alec Isagonis as a response to the first oil crisis, the 1956 Suez Crisis, and the boom in bubble cars that followed. It was the first production front-wheel drive car with a water-cooled inline four-cylinder engine mounted transversely. This allowed 80% of the floor plan for the use of passengers and luggage. The majority of modern cars use this configuration. Its progressive rate rubber sprung independent suspension, low center of gravity, and wheel at each corner with radial tires, gave a massive increase in grip and handling over all but the most expensive cars on the market. It used GKN-designed constant velocity joint drive shaft universal joints. The Mini revived the use of front-wheel drive which had been largely abandoned since the 1930s. Topic 1960-1975 The transversely mounted engine combined with front-wheel drive was popularized by the 1959 Mini, there the transmission was built into the sump of the engine, and drive was transferred to it via a set of primary gears. Another variant transmission concept was used by Simca in the 1960s keeping the engine and transmission in line, but transverse mounted and with unequal length drive shafts. This has proven itself to be the model on which almost all modern forward vehicles are now based. Peugeot and Renault on their jointly developed small car engine of the 1970s where the four-cylinder block was canted over to reduce the overall height of the engine with the transmission underneath PSAX engine. The tendency of this layout to generate unwanted transmission wine, has seen it fall out of favor. Also, clutch changes required engine removal. Ford introduced front-wheel drive to its European customers in 1962 with the Taunus P4. The 1965 Triumph 1300 was designed around a longitudinal engine with the transmission underneath. Audi has also used a longitudinally mounted engine overhung over the front wheels since the 1970s. Audi is one of the few manufacturers which still uses this particular configuration. It allows the use of equal length half shafts and the easy addition of all wheel drive, but has the disadvantage that it makes it difficult to achieve 50 50 weight distribution, although they remedy this in four wheel drive models by mounting the gearbox at the rear of the transaxle. The Subaru 1000 appeared in 1966 utilizing front wheel drive mated to a flat four engine, with the drive shafts of equal length extending from the transmission, which addressed some of the issues of the powertrain being somewhat complex and unbalanced in the engine compartment. The Alfa Romeo Alfa Sud and its replacement, the 1983 Alfa 33, as well as the Alfa 145 146 up to late 1990s, also used the same same layout. Honda also introduced several small front-wheel drive vehicles, with the N360 and N600, the Z360 and Z600 in 1967, the Honda 1300 in 1969, followed by the Honda Civic in 1972 and the Honda Accord in 1976. Also in the 1970s and 1980s, the Douvrin engines used in the larger Renaults 20, 21, 25 and 30 used this longitudinal forward layout. The first generation Saab 900, launched in 1978, also used a longitudinal engine with a transmission underneath with helical gears. The 1966 Oldsmobile Toronado was the first U.S. front-wheel drive car since the Cord 810. It used a longitudinal engine placement for its V8, coupled with an unusual split transmission, which turned the engine power 180 degrees. Power then went to a differential mounted to the transmission case, from which half shafts took it to the wheels. 
The driveline was set fairly at center point of the wheels for better weight distribution, though this raised the engine, requiring lowered intake systems. Giacosa innovation Front-wheel drive layout had been highly impacted by the success of small, inexpensive cars, especially the British Mini. As engineered by Alec Isagonis, the compact arrangement located the transmission and engine sharing a single oil sump—despite disparate lubricating requirements, and had the engine's radiator mounted to the side of the engine, away from the flow of fresh air and drawing heated rather than cool air over the engine. The layout often required the engine be removed to service the clutch, as engineered by Dante Giacosa. The Fiat 128 featured a transverse mounted engine with unequal length drive shafts and an innovative clutch release mechanism. An arrangement which Fiat had strategically tested on a previous production model, the Primula, from its less market-critical subsidiary, Autobianchi. Ready for production in 1964, the Primula featured a gear train offset from the differential and final drive with unequal length drive shafts. The layout enabled the engine and gearbox to be located side by side without sharing lubricating fluid while orienting the cooling fan toward fresh air flow. By using the Primula as a test bed, Fiat was able to sufficiently resolve the layout's disadvantages, including uneven side-to-side -side power transmission, uneven tire wear and potential torque steer, the tendency for the power of the engine alone to steer the car under heavy acceleration. After the 128, Fiat further demonstrated the layout's flexibility, reconfigurating the 128 drivetrain as a mid-engined layout for the Fiat by 1 9th. The compact, efficient Giacosa layout, a transversely mounted engine with transmission mounted beside the engine driving the front wheels through an offset final drive and unequal length drive shafts, combined with McPherson struts and an independently located radiator subsequently became common with competitors and arguably an industry standard. Topic 1975 to 1990 The corporate average fuel economy standard drove a mass changeover of cars in the US to front wheel drive. The change began in 1978, with the introduction of the first American-built transverse engine cars, the Plymouth Horizon and Dodge Omni based on the European-designed Simca Horizon, followed by the 1980 Chevrolet Citation and numerous other vehicles. Meanwhile, European car makers, that had moved to front-wheel drive decades before, began to homogenize their engine arrangement only in this decade, leaving Audi and Volkswagen alone with the Audi front-drive longitudinal engine layout. Years before this was the most common layout in Europe, with examples like Citroën DS, Renault 12, Renault 5, Renault 25, a Chrysler LH Ancestor, Alfa Romeo 33, Volkswagen Passat, etc. This transition can be exemplified in the Renault 21 that was offered with disparate engine configurations. The 1.7-liter version featured an east-west transversely mounted engine, but Renault had no gearbox suitable for a more powerful transverse engine. Accordingly, faster versions featured longitudinally mounted north-south engines. By reducing drivetrain weight and space needs, vehicles could be made smaller and more efficient without sacrificing acceleration. Integrating the powertrain with a transverse as opposed to a longitudinal layout, along with unibody construction and the use of constant velocity jointed drive axles, along with front wheel drive has evolved into the modern day mass market automobile. Some suggest that the introduction of the modern Volkswagen Golf in 1974, from a traditional U.S. competitor, and the introduction of the 1973 Honda Civic, and the 1976 Honda Accord served as a wake-up call for the Big Three. Only Chrysler already produced front-wheel drive vehicles in their operations outside North America. GM was even later with the 1979 Vauxhall Astra, Opel Cadet. Captive imports were the U.S. car makers' initial response to the increased demand for economy cars. 
The popularity of front-wheel drive began to gain momentum, with the 1981 Ford Escort, the 1982 Nissan Sentra, and the 1983 Toyota Corolla. Front-wheel drive became the norm for mid-sized cars starting with the 1982 Chevrolet Celebrity, 1982 Toyota Camry, 1983 Dodge 600, 1985 Nissan Maxima, 1986 Honda Legend, and the 1986 Ford Taurus. By the mid-1980s, most formerly rear-wheel drive Japanese models were front-wheel drive, and by the mid-1990s, most American brands only sold a handful of rear-wheel drive models. Topic: 1990-present. The vast majority of front-wheel drive vehicles today use a transversely mounted engine with end-on mounted transmission, driving the front wheels via driveshafts linked via constant velocity CV joints, and a flexibly located electronically controlled cooling fan. This configuration was pioneered by Dante Giacosa in the 1964 Autobianchi Primula and popularized with the Fiat 128. Fiat promoted in its advertising that mechanical features consumed only 20% of the vehicle's volume and that Enzo Ferrari drove a 128 as his personal vehicle. The 1959 Mini used a substantially different arrangement with the transmission in the sump, and the cooling fan drawing hot air from its side-facing location. Volvo Cars has switched its entire lineup after the 900 series to front-wheel drive. Swedish engineers at the company have said that transversely mounted engines allow for more crumple zone area in a head-on collision. American auto manufacturers are now shifting larger models such as the Chrysler 300 and most of the Cadillac lineup back to rear-wheel drive. There were relatively few rear-wheel drive cars marketed in North America by the early 1990s. Chrysler's car lineup was entirely front-wheel drive by 1990. GM followed suit in 1996 where its B-body line was phased out, where its sports cars Camaro, Firebird, Corvette were the only RWDs marketed. By the early 2000s, the Chevrolet Corvette and Cadillac Catera were the only RWD cars offered by General Motors until the introduction of the Sigma platform. After the phase-out of the Ford Panther platform except for the Mustang, Ford automobiles including the Transit Connect van manufactured for the 2012 model year to present a front-wheel drive, its D3 platform based on a Volvo platform has optional all-wheel drive. Records <inaudible> 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 The Nissan GTR LM Nismo race car holds the record for being the most powerful front-wheel drive car, with its combustion engine outputs approximately 500 horsepower, 370 kilowatts, 510 PS, while the flywheel system is intended to have an additional output of approximately 750 horsepower, 560 kilowatts, 760 PS. This accounts for a total of 1,250 horsepower, 930 kilowatts, 1,270 PS. Power from the flywheel was intended to be split between the front and rear wheels, making the car all-wheel drive in this configuration. However, due to unreliability, the car was raced without the flywheel and with 500 horsepower driving the front wheels only. However, the 1970 Oldsmobile Toronado remains the most powerful street-legal front-wheel drive production car till today, with W34 option producing 400 horsepower, 298 kilowatts. A production Dodge Neon SRT4 from Racetech Racing broke the land speed record for its class at Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah on August 16, 2006. Driven by Jorgen Moller Jr., the record was set at 221 miles per hour average speed for both runs on the five-mile course. Topic. See also: automobile layout, 
front engine, front wheel drive layout, front mid engine, front wheel drive layout, rear wheel drive, four wheel drive, FF layout, category, front wheel drive sports cars.